Hello everyone, Piers from Piers Invest Plays here today. After peaking in early 2021, Twitter stock has been on a roller coaster ride, mostly down. Year to date, it has shared 19%, whereas Nasdaq has risen 29%. Has the stock peaked? Or can we expect higher stock price in the future? In this video, we will understand its business its financials, its future growth outlook, and review its chart using Elliott Wave to see how we can make money. So stick around, I think you'll like what I have in store for you today. Twitter, ticker TWTR. Twitter is an American microblogging and social networking service on which users post and interact with messages known as tweets. Registered users can post, like, and retweet tweets, but unregistered users can only read those that are publicly available. Twitter and other social media companies have truly revolutionized the way people communicate with each other. The microblogging platform allows users to send brief messages and comment on current events in politics, business, entertainment, or a thousand other areas of interest. Twitter went through a long period of accelerating growth as its user count and revenues steadily climbed over the years. By Q3 2021, Twitter's platform has grown to 211 million monetizable daily active users, or MDAU. Since the end of fiscal year 2020, Twitter added 19 million new MDAUs to its messaging platform. But growth rates have started to slow in fiscal year 2021 compared to the earlier year earlier period. Total monetizable daily active usage grew at a 13% rate year over year in Q3 2021. And the US market, despite being super profitable, is becoming a drag on Twitter's MDAU growth. In Q3 2021, US MDAU growth was just 4% year over year, while Twitter's international market saw 15% MDAU growth year over year. The slowdown in usage growth was especially prevalent in the US, where MDAU growth rates dropped from 24% in Q2 2020 to just 2% in Q3 2021. The US accounts for 18% of Twitter's user base. Twitter faces longer term challenges regarding its usage, account, and revenue growth, and the business is unlikely to grow as fast as it once did. The 2020 closures boosted Twitter's business growth a fair bit, chiefly because people were locked down and had more free time to tweet. So a slowdown in growth post 2020 closures should have been expected. However, Twitter's total revenue in Q3 2021 still increased at a 37% rate year over year. The US market generates more than half of all revenues despite a much lower number of MDAUs. Twitter's Q3 profits were affected by one-time settlement. Class action lawsuits were filed against the company and its officers for alleg allegedly making false and misleading statements in 2015. And Twitter entered into a binding agreement to settle these lawsuits for almost $810 million. Because of this settlement, Twitter recorded a one-time litigation-related net charge of $765.7 million in the third quarter. Due to this settlement, Twitter reported a $536.8 million loss for the last reporting period. Twitter posted Q3 2021 revenues of $1.28 billion, implying a growth rate of 37%.
free cash flow was negative $20.2 million in the last quarter, but Twitter normally generates a significant amount of positive free cash flow. Twitter's LTM trailing 12 months free cash flow adds up to $334.5 million, which is equivalent to a free cash flow margin of 7%. Twitter's free cash flow prospects chiefly depend on user engagement trends, MDAU growth, and a strong ad market, especially in the US. I think that Twitter can achieve a 10% free cash flow margin next year as new products are rolled out. Twitter is projected to achieve revenues of $5.1 billion in fiscal year 2021, again which implies 37% revenue growth year over year. In the following year, which is 2022, Twitter is expected to grow sales to $6.2 billion, implying a revenue growth rate of 22%. Twitter could achieve even faster growth, possibly, if the platform finds new monetization opportunities, especially in the shopping segment which Twitter is looking to explore. Because Twitter is set to continue to grow its platform and revenues derived from ad placements and data licensing, Twitter's sales growth has been heavily discounted lately. The PS ratio for Twitter based off of fiscal year 2022 sales is around 6 x significantly below the march peak of 10x moreover the risk of slowing growth is much larger for twitter in the us than it is elsewhere this is because users in the us are responsible for 58 percent of revenues despite accounting only for 18 percent of twitter's mda use for that reason A slowdown in the US advertising market would hit Twitter a lot harder than a slowdown in ad spend in the international market. Another criticism about Twitter is that the platform is considered by many as enabling toxic discussion styles, which may invite targeted legislation. Regulation would almost certainly decrease the profitability of Twitter's messaging platform longer term. This criticism is not new, however, and is not only leveled at Twitter. Since Twitter went through a large drop in pricing since March, the risk profile is heavily skewed to the upside. Its stock took investors on a wild roller coaster ride on November 29th, after CEO Jack Dorsey abruptly announced his resignation. Parag Agarwal the company's chief technology officer will succeed Dorsey. The social media company's stock initially soared by as much as 11% following Dorsey's announcement, but still ended the day down nearly 3%. Dorsey said that Twitter's status as a founder-led company was not a strength, but rather severely limiting and a single point of failure. The company needed to break away from its founding and founders to grow. Twitter's board unanimously approved Parag Agarwal's promotion to the CEO position, which Dorsey praised, saying that Agarwal had previously been behind every critical decision that helped turn this company around. I see this as a very positive move. Also, as a renewed focus, it is now focusing on improving the engagement rates among a smaller audience of more active users, instead of aggressively growing its MAUs. This approach has stabilized Twitter's revenue growth over the past four years. I see this as an excellent strategy. Looking at the financials for Twitter, Revenue, gross profit, EBITDA, net income, EPS or earnings per share have increased year over year and quarter over quarter. Even if you discount 2020 and compare 2021 financials against 2019, they have increased by a very good clip. In the chart on the right, free cash flow or FCF currently stands at 42 cents per share. 
Based on the current price to FCF ratio, the stock is trading in line when compared with historical averages. In the chart on the left, the price to earnings ratio or PE ratio currently stands at 83.10. Based on the current stock price to EPS ratio, the stock is trading at a discount. Twitter is cheap based on expected sales growth. The US ad market is super lucrative for Twitter. Although MDAU growth can be expected to cheaply occur outside of the US. Twitter is also looking at other opportunities for monetization, like enabling shopping functionality on its platform, which could help create additional revenue growth. With its stock price decline, its sales growth has become too cheap. I think investors who have a long-term investment horizon should take this opportunity to buy the dips. This is also indicative in the charts where I see the stock price to experience some pullback before it increases considerably in the next 5-6 to six years. Now let's take a look at the charts of Twitter. Sorry for the interruption, but if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and hit the notification bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. With that said, let's get back to our analysis. Looking at the chart of Twitter, the bull run that started in 2020 is still not over. It has completed its first wave and now wave 2 which is a corrective wave is in progress. Wave 2 is typically 61.8% or 76.4% retracement of wave 1 giving us a buy range of $34.18 to $39.89. To me, this is accumulation range for Twitter stock. After this wave is completed, I expect wave 3 to resume and wave 3 is typically 161.8% of waves 1 to 2, giving us a short term price target of $138.87. After this wave is completed, I expect wave 4 to resume, which is typically 23.6% retracement of wave 3, giving us a short term price target of $115.56. After this wave is completed, I expect wave 5 to resume, which is the final leg up, and wave 5 is typically 161.8% retracement of wave 4, giving us a final price target of $153.74, which translates into a 305% profit in the next 5 to 6 years. Now, let's summarize. The current stock price for Twitter is excellent entry point if you want to nibble. Nibble any pullbacks and accumulate further corrections. And hold the stock for at least 5 to 6 years as I expect a price target of $153.74 which translates into a 305% profit in the next 5 to 6 years. What do you think of this analysis? Please leave me a comment and let me know. As always, Please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and hit the notification bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. Until then, bye bye.